today we're going to be rebuilding these 3,500 pound Dexter axle tubes right here. And as you can see, I got these things all sanded down, got them all painted. And these tubes are good to go. Come over here to where our parts are, and this is what we've got. We've got ourselves two springs that I sanded down and repainted. In front of that we got ourselves two 3,500 pound hubs which came off these axles. All these parts came off these axles which I sanded down and repainted. Over here we've got a U-bolt kit, some plates, and U-bolts, a couple plates, U-bolts, nuts, locking washers, stuff like that. Then over here we've got our brake assemblies which I bought off of Amazon. We've got a left-handed side here and a right-handed side right here and they are different so when you go to put these on you know make sure you're putting the right-handed side one on the right side and the left-handed side one on the left side because that does matter. And then over here We've got the bolts and nuts for these brake assemblies. And I think that's about everything we're going to need. We got uh, for the hubs, we've got bearings. We're going to uh, pack the bearings. And we've got caps and castle nut and carter keys and stuff like that. Carter pins, I guess they're called. So let's get this thing put together. So, in case you hadn't, didn't see in the first scene, there was a little bit of surface rust on these spindles here. I just took a piece of steel wool. And just went across and basically got it off. But I should have done a better job when I, I, I taped these off when I painted it so it won't get paint on these. And then once the paint dried, I peeled the tape off and I should have probably just coated this thing in grease because it was going to be sitting outside and there was moisture and stuff. Um, but I didn't do that. So just took a piece of steel wool and took care of that. So now we're ready to put on the brake assemblies. And like I said earlier, there is a left-handed side and there is a right-handed side. And I bought these off of Amazon. If you see, there's a tag right there. On that tag, it'll say RH for right-handed or LH for left-handed. We're working on the right-hand side. This is the right side of the axle here. So we're going to go ahead and put this one on. This thing here should always be at the bottom. This is pretty simple. It's got four studs on the back. And you got four holes right here. Basically, just line them up and slide them in. And that's what you got. Goes on. I'm gonna take these nuts that's in this bag that comes with it. There should be like eight nuts in here because it comes in packs of twos, the left hand side and right hand side. Unless you order just one, but I figured since you're changing them. You might as well change both of them. It comes with um, new nuts and lock washers. We're going to need four of each. On the back side of these, you can see my four studs sticking out through here. And this is my wires for my electric brake hook up there. And basically, I mean, it's pretty common sense. You really can't screw this up. Put a lock washer on. And put a nut on and crank it down Ooh, almost messed that one up didn't put my lock washer on you could also put some like anti-seize on these threads if you wanted to or what I've seen other people put on it they'll take like regular wheel grease and just put a little bit of wheel grease on it and that way when it comes to changing these things, I have to take them bolts off. They'll come off easier. Okay, so they're hand tight. We'll grab a wrench and crank those down. And now, just use an 11 16 socket, an extension. You will need an extension on these um, bottom ones, unless you got a deep well socket. I don't. Basically, just gonna crank these things down.
and that is basically it. Your um, brakes are now installed on here, and now what we can do is actually hook up these wires to these wires. These are the brake wires. I'm not going to hook these up because I'm actually going to be replacing these on these axles. But this is the brake wires. It doesn't matter which one hooks to which. You're going to have two bare wires here, two bare wires there. Just hook them together. Like I said, it doesn't matter. It'll work. You can't get that wrong. So that's one side done. I'm going to go to the other side, hook up that side, and we'll come back to show you how to install the hub. Brakes are on. They're all tightened down. Good to go. We are now ready to install our wheel hub. There is no left and no right. They work on either side, so you don't have to worry about getting these ones mixed up. And these are pretty simple. It is basically, you got a, a wheel seal and a bearing in the back already installed. And these things just slide over top the seal and go back against like that. Now, that's how they slide on. We still got to put a bearing in the front of here. We got to grease that thing up. On the front side of this, we're going to have a, a bearing that goes on, a flat washer, if I can get that in the camera, a flat washer, and a castle nut. So this is our bearing here, and we have to put grease in this thing before we put it in. We just can't install it without putting grease in because it'll burn up probably before you can get out the end of your driveway. So I'm going to show you how to grease up a bearing. This is the bearing grease I use. It's a CarQuest brand. It doesn't matter what brand you use. This is a high temperature wheel bearing grease. I would suggest a high temperature wheel bearing grease because this is going to get hot going down the road. All right, to grease these bearings, I'm just gonna take a thing of grease, put it in the palm of my hand like this take my bearing and start Let's see if I can get you to see what I'm doing here I got my finger in the hole and I'm basically driving the grease up in to uh, like this and then spinning it a little bit and continue to do that until you see grease coming out the top And my theory is, you can't put too much grease in these things. You want it to be messy. Because the last thing you want to do is be driving down the road and uh, your bearings go out on you. Because then you're stranded sitting alongside the road trying to switch bearings and that's no fun. So, this is what she looks like when she's done. There's grease everywhere, inside, outside, all over the place. That's what you want. You want this thing to be basically a mess. You can even take this thing and spin it, hold the inside, I'm holding the inside with my thumb, and spin the outside, letting that grease kind of get inside the bearings itself. Like that. But that's about it. It's not really that hard to do. I just want this thing to be a greasy mess. And now it's ready to go in. So I got our greased up bearing and there's a taper to this bearing. There's a narrow end and a wide end. The narrow end is going to go to the inside, the wide end is going to go to the outside. So another thing you can do also, and I probably should have done on this, take a little bit of grease and um, put it in here on this race that's inside there and you're gonna get uh, grease on the threads and stuff that's fine you can wipe that off later but get grease on that race get that whole thing slopping in there with grease like I said you see the grease coming out like I said that's fine and this thing's just gonna slide in like that just adjust it And make sure that it's seated in there the way it's supposed to be. Now what I like to do, I don't know how 
necessary this is, but I'll take grease and try to pack as much grease in front of this thing as possible. Just by taking my fingers and just jamming it in there. Because again, my theory is you can't ever have too much grease. And we'll clean this up in a second. And then I hold the bearing in and kind of spin it, trying to get that as much as possible in there. Next thing that goes on is your flat washer. It'll slide on if I can get it on. Most people like to wear gloves, but me personally, I like to feel the grease on my fingers. That's in there. Next thing is your castle nut. And then get it hand tight. Spin this thing around. You will want to tighten that down with a pair of pliers. So it doesn't shake around. And there's a hole, and it's right here. There's a hole, and I think I can get it. <clears throat> well, maybe not. I'm going to have to get a pair of pliers. But what, what you kind of want to do is over tighten it a little bit and spin it like that. And then bring it back. There's a hole right there that you got to put a cotter pin in. And I got to get a pair of pliers just to snug this up just a little bit. And then we'll be perfect. What is, what's important on these castle nuts is you don't want to over tighten them. You don't want to like take an impact and crank them down or anything like that. Just the basic pair of pliers like you've seen me I got it almost there with my fingers and just spin it make sure it works it's not too tight and not too loose to where the, the the things actually like move them back and forth so there's a hole right here in the center and what you're gonna do is take a new cotter pin don't use the old one always replace this and they should slide in from the side like that you might have to tap them through a little bit to give them the fit and then bend them like that and that's what holds this castle nut in that's why you don't have to crank this castle nut down this carter pin or cotter pin will hold that from coming loose and now, that is good to go. Last thing you got to do is your cap. Cap goes on, and so that's going to do it for putting on the the hub here, the bearings, the washer, the castle nut, the cotter key, and this end cap. So now all we have to do is put the leaf springs on this and we're done. So we're gonna put the leaf springs on now. So the last thing we gotta do is we gotta put some leaf springs back on these axles. So I got some new U-bolts here. I got two new U-bolts. My theory is always replace those if you're replacing, if you're taking old U-bolts off always buy new got a new plate um, I wouldn't normally replace this but it came with the u-bolt kit so I'm going to use it otherwise I would have cleaned up the other one and reused it it also comes with new nuts and new lock washers and of course the leaf spring itself which I sanded down and painted I also put new bushings in. I knocked the old bushings out and put new bushings in. But there again this is pretty easy stuff I believe. There is a knob on the bottom right here. And there's a hole on this spring bracket. That knob goes in that hole. Like that. And then on your plate you got four holes on the outside, four holes on the inside, the center hole goes over that nut like that and then two u-bolts go like this around the tube and up through the two holes this spring up through here and 
then from there, your two lock washers and two nuts. Lock washer. Nut. Right. Now you want to go ahead and check and make sure that these U-bolts are straight up and down to like the back of the um, hub here. You don't want them like cranked out on the bottom like this or cranked in. You want them straight up and down. So basically you want to try to push them up against your spring hanger here that's welded onto the tube or get them as close as you can. You might not be able to get it up against but you should be able to get as close as you can. Once you get them straight, you should be able to crank them down with a ratchet and socket. Okay guys, that's gonna do it on how to rebuild a 3,500 pound Dexter axle. Now this will work on pretty much any trailer axle or axle you're rebuilding. I did a 3,500 pound one today. It'll work on a 2,000 pound, a 3,500 pound, 4,000 pound, 7,000 pound, 6,000 pound, and probably the way up to like a 10,000 pound. If you like videos like this and want to see more, subscribe to my channel. Click that bell so you get notified every time I upload a video. Go into the comment section and tell me what you think about this. Like this video, share this video, and thanks for watching.